Isso. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My name is Father Chris Barron. I'm the parochial vicar at St. George up in Erie, and I'm happy to celebrate these liturgies this weekend with you. As we come to gather around this altar to celebrate the most sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and for peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. We 
day. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the th throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The Word of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, what do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, we can. Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord.
The very essence and center of the Christian faith is Christ himself, the God-man, fully human, fully divine at the same time. The two most fundamental heresies against the heart of Christianity are the denial of the full divinity of Christ and the denial of the full humanity of Christ. Both of these heresies have been popular both in the early church and even today because they are much easier to understand and less surprising than the truth. On the one hand, so-called modernist theology denies the full divinity of Christ and sees him simply as the ideal man, the perfect man, the man for others, but not as the creed claims the only begotten Son of God, true God from true God, consubstantial with the Father. This is called Arianism in ancient times, after the heretical bishop. Today it is called modernism. On the other hand, it is tempting to see Christ as simply God in disguise, timeless and eternal and perfect in every way, not just morally, not subject to human frailties and temptations. That is the error today's epistle, today's second reading, corrects. Jesus shared not just our mortality, but also all our weaknesses, sufferings, failures, emotional depressions, and even temptations. The Greek word that the NAB translate as tested is more clearly translated as tempted. Jesus was tempted by the devil, not just once in the wilderness, but repeatedly, just as we are. Every single temptation, every kind of temptation that is in us, in our human nature, nature was in him. That included temptations to pride and despair, lust and greed, laziness and stubbornness, everything we have ever felt. Yet he did not succumb to them. When he assumed human nature, he assumed not the unfallen human nature that the innocent Adam and Eve had before the fall, with everything perfectly in order, with the passions totally obedient to the reason and will, and with the body totally obedient to the soul. But he assumed our fallen, frail, imperfect human nature. He felt the temptations just as we do, but he did not yield to them. To be tempted, you don't have to be a sinner. Eve was not a sinner when she was tempted. She became a sinner only when she yielded to the temptation and ate of the fruit of the tree which she was told not to. The author of the letter to the Hebrews first affirms Christ's heavenly divinity when he writes that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. And then he affirms Christ's full humanity in the next words. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. The author next shows us the consequence of this truth, which is very, very practical. It is that because of his closeness to us, we can have a closeness to him. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. Christ knows everything about us, And not just from above, as the Father does, but also from within, from his equality with us, from sharing our full humanity. He understands. He fully understands our struggles and weaknesses because he, too, lived in our humanity. He walked among us, faced temptation, and suffered, experienced suffering. He can truly say to us, I know how you feel, without lying or patronizing. 
He understands us far better than we understand ourselves. St. Augustine calls him the one who is more intimately present to me than I am to myself. He is the only perfect psychoanalysis. He doesn't charge anything for his sessions except our pride and our egotism. He is more relentless in extracting our pride than a dentist is in extracting our rooting teeth or a surgeon in cutting away all our cancers. Dentists, doctors, psychologists, lawyers, and politicians ask for our money, not our hearts. It's business, not love. Jesus asks for our hearts, not our money. It's love, not business. And so visit him often. His door is always open. Its name is prayer. And so what does this all mean for us today? First and foremost, it means that we can approach Jesus with confidence. The author encourages us to approach the throne with boldness. This invitation is not just for a select few, but for all of us. In our moments of weakness, fear, or doubt, we are reminded that we have a compassionate Savior who intercedes for us. Think about that for a moment. When you feel overwhelmed by life's challenges, when we struggle with sin, or when we find ourselves in pain, we don't have to hide or withdraw. Instead, we can come to Jesus just as we are, confident that he understands our plight. This is a grace-filled assurance that invites us into deeper intimacy with him. Furthermore, this passage also calls us to reflect on our prayer life. Are we approaching God with that confidence? Do we seek Him out in our daily struggles? Sometimes we might feel unworthy to approach Him, thinking our sins or failures disqualify us. Yet Jesus' high priesthood is not about our weak worthiness, but about His love and mercy. The second part of this reading reminds us that we are called to receive mercy and grace. Let us approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. This is not merely an invitation. It is a promise. God is always ready to extend his mercy, to lift us up when we fall, and to offer us grace when we feel we can't go on. In our busy lives, it can be easy to forget this truth. We often rely on our own strength or become consumed by our worries. Yet Jesus is there encouraging us to surrender our burdens to him. He wants to be our refuge, our source of strength. In prayer, we open our hearts and invite his presence into our lives, allowing his grace to transform our struggles into moments of growth. As we reflect on Jesus as our high priest, let us also consider our role in the world. If we are to embody the love and mercy we receive from him, we must also extend that same grace to others. In our families, communities, and workplaces, How can we be instruments of his mercy? How can we uplift those who are struggling just as he uplifts us? Let us then hold fast to our confession of faith, confident in the love and mercy of our great high priest. May we approach him boldly, knowing that he understands our struggles and is always ready to help us in our time of need. May we be inspired to reflect his love in our lives, becoming channels of grace for those around us.
Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. the dead, and the life, the world to come. Amen. We now present our petitions before our Heavenly Father. For the Church, that we may obey Jesus' command to serve by ministering to those in need, whomever they are, whatever their background, wherever we find them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our elected leaders, that they may realize that they are elected to serve all of their constituents, especially those who have the least, and that this may be reflected in the work that they do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, that they will experience the healing power of God and will find support in their community's care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For missionaries and those working in pastoral care, that they may know of the support of all the faithful by our generosity and our willingness to serve on our own way. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community of faith, May we be given the grace to serve others and pour out our lives in love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have strayed from the Eucharist, may they reunite with us at the table of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they be brought to the side of Christ and be at rest with him in heaven. And for Jay and Kim McMillan, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please pause now and add your own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, hear and answer all these prayers and petitions we bring before you, those spoken aloud and those held in the depths of our hearts. Answer them according to thy most holy will. We ask this through Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 714, what you have done for me.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim.
We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so love the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, Lawrence, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, 
May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 830, Seed, Scattered, and Sown.
As the vessels are purified, now is the time just to sit in your pew or kneel. 
just remain in that embrace of God's love and his mercy. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. It was a pleasure to come down here and celebrate this liturgy with you. Uh, Thank you for the warm welcome, and uh, may you have an enjoyable rest of your weekend. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 754, Praise and Thanksgiving. i